Hi, my name is Anthony Bear. I'm a facial plastic surgeon in Miami, Florida, and I'm here with a patient who one week ago uh, underwent a rib revision rhinoplasty, um, and I um, wanted to share uh, the patient's experience uh, and um, her post-operative course, obviously this being very early uh, in the first week. Um, I just want to show the patient's uh, preoperative uh, findings. Her main issue was the patient had had three previous, two previous uh, surgeries and three previous uh, traumas. If you can just focus in here, the, the frontal view is nothing, uh, uh, was nothing too uh, alarming. Uh, in fact, it was very deceptive in this patient's the findings under the skin. Um, you just see some, a lot of asymmetries in the nostrils. Um, but her biggest issues were her profile view. As you can see, she had a uh, droopy tip as well as a hidden columella. These were the cosmetic findings. But the most challenging of which was her breathing issues. Uh, the patient, because of the previous surgeries, as you can see here on the base view, which is very informative, she had extreme narrowing of her nasal valve on the right side and complete obstruction of, of, of the, I'm sorry, of the patient's left side. Uh, intraoperatively, um, it was a very uh, complicated case uh, with a lot of uh, scar tissue uh, and uh, grafts that were noted. Uh, importantly, there were no uh, lower lateral cartilages, which are the cartilages that make up the tip. So those had to be completely reconstructed for this purpose. And the fact that the patient had had previous surgeries as well as ear cartilage used in the past, uh, rib cartilage was used. And this was harvested from her right chest wall. Uh, I use approximately the sixth or seventh uh, rib cartilage, depending on the patient's anatomy. So I just wanted to share with the patient, uh, she's uh, with us today, of uh, her experience. Um, if you can just explain to patients uh, the post-operative period, um, what, you know, any fears that you might had, uh, and so forth, um, and your experiences um, for the last week at least. I know it's only been one week. Um, my worst fear was that I was going to breathe worse for the inner scars, and that I was going to have a huge scar on my breast. But I started breathing better by day two, and even better by now. As far as the chest wall uh, incision and so forth, was uh, that a... You know, it's very, you can't even see it, barely, and it's been a week. I'm happy. <laughs> I purposely uh, perform uh, the harvest of rib cartilage uh, from the sixth rib, which is higher up in the chest. And in women, it's very well hidden, because it's actually hidden in the crease below the, the breast. It's called the inframammary crease. Um, so therefore, with, uh, uh, with the breast overlying it, uh, it's very, very well camouflaged in that area. And for this reason, I use that cartilage and not the um, lower cartilage, the free-floating cartilage, such as the 10th uh, rib uh, and so forth, which is often used uh, with incisions on the right chest wall. So as you can see, um, her she's very swollen on the frontal view, and that will obviously go down over time. It's only been one week, and the cast was initially removed. But uh, importantly, you'll see the uh, changes on the uh, profile view, which are uh, immediately evident. So, thank you very much. My name is Anthony Verrett. I'm a facial plastic surgeon in Miami, Florida.